Iago from Catalog to uh, stay us updates on rocket and integration with Kubernetes. Uh, 
three stages, stage zero, stage one, stage two. So stage zero is just a rocket binary CLI, so that does image fetching, uh, it renders the image in the file system. Uh, stage one is the actual container, so it's the environment that POTS will live in. And it, it does project lifecycle management and it uh, contains the resources. And in stage two is just your application, so it's whatever you run. Uh, the cool, one of the cool thing about the stage one is that it's swappable, so there's different implementations. The default one uses Linux namespaces and cgroups, which uh, is what people use to call the Linux container. And it's based on systemd and spawn, and inside that container we run systemd again to manage all the applications in the pod. But there's also different implementations. Uh, there's KVM implementation, which it, it uses hardware virtualization instead of uh, Linux containers. And it's based currently on QMO and systemd. Uh, so that's pretty cool, you get on full VM where you can run your applications. And then there's Fly, which is uh, something that has no isolation, it's just a CH root. And it's there because uh, to take advantage of Rocket's image distribution mechanism, uh, yeah, that helps uh, when you want to run just an application without uh, isolation. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about a bit, uh, a bit about Kubernetes. Uh, so probably most of you will know this, but I will give the Production. So Kubernetes is just an orchestration system, and it provides the developer with an API, that, and the developer can just uh, submit containers to that API and doesn't have to care where those containers will, will run and which nodes. And the, the thing I want to focus here is this kubelet thing. Uh, so this is a component that runs on each node of a Kubernetes cluster, and it's the one that, that's actually um, tasked to execute the containers themselves. Um, so, in the beginning, in Kubernetes, everything was Docker, uh, and uh, that was not ideal, so uh, when we tried to put Rocket in Kubernetes, we discovered all these assumptions in Kubernetes that were there, and that led to the creation of the CRI interface, and yeah, thanks to the CRI interface, now we have uh, different implementations for container runtimes in Kubernetes, like Cryo, like uh, CRI container D, uh, or like Rocketlib which is what I'm going to talk about next. So the CRI uh, defines some interface that container runtimes need to implement, and this can, these are these methods, methods uh, like run bot sandbox to create a sandbox that's empty, no containers there. Then you can add containers, and you can then start containers and stop containers. So basically an interface that abstracts, abstracts away the, the container operations. And then the kubelet calls these methods by gRPC. And then you have something on the other side of the gRPC connection that implements that. And as I mentioned before, theory container D is an example, cryo, and rocketlib. So how does rocketlib work? Uh, as I said before, the kubelet is there. It sends a gRPC request to the rocketlib daemon. And then what the rocketlib daemon does is it, it will start a system D unit per pod. And then uh, it will add and remove containers if the operations require that, uh, communicating to, with, with, the, with the rockets running as systemd units. So yeah, it's, it's pretty simple, and then uh, yeah, we take advantage of systemd's uh, supervision capabilities. So to implement uh, the rocket lid, uh, we had to do some design changes to rocket, because on rocket, uh, we had this concept of immutable pods so your pod is defined from the beginning and then you just run it. But the CRI defines uh, something different, uh, influenced by the way Docker works, because in Docker there's no pod concept, so you just have containers and then they're linked together. Uh, so we had to implement mutable uh, pods in Rocket. And to do that, we did this, what we call the app experiment. And uh, yeah, basically we had a new sub command for Rocket that I create sandbox, and then we added more commands to add containers uh, and remove containers and start containers and stop containers. Since, as I said before, we're running systemd inside a container, this was pretty easy because this maps pretty well with systemd concepts like create a new unit file or remove the unit file or start a unit file or stop the unit file. So that helps us. Uh, and for now it lives under a uh, variable, so it's not really visible by default. And yeah, that's the name of the, the variable. Uh, another problem we had is was logs. So Rocket used uh, journaldy inside the container to manage all the logs. And uh, the CRI doesn't really like the binary format of journaldy, uh, of course. 
And uh, this very one text format, like the plain text, very, sim very simple. So the initial solution we came up with was kind of a hack because we just ha add a sidecar app to the pod and that app will translate the journal logs to the CRI logs and write it in the right place. But that's kind of a, that, that was kind of unreliable and resource consuming. For example, the image was, I don't know, 500 megs, which is not very ideal. So the proper solution uh, is we did this experiment attach and it's basically uh, creating this component called IFTT YMAX that sits in the middle between the outside of the container and the application <laughs> and just intercepts all the standard output and error and input of the application and it can write the output and the error to the file directly without uh, having any translation. So this is the diagram of how it works. Uh, so you have your structure there and you have system inside the container that starts the IFTT YMAX component and then the, the output of the application is connected to IFTT YMAX and that's being written to the file there. Uh, and yeah, that's the form, well, a simplified version of the format for the CRI logs, which is just a date, the stream type, and then the log uh, line. And this will also, um, this also allows us to attach to, to the input and output of the application, which was not possible before. Uh, so yeah, it allows us to implement something like rocket attach. Um, so yeah, th those were the, the most difficult parts when we tried to integrate uh, Rocket with, uh, with uh, Kubernetes. So now I will talk about the recent developments in, uh, in Rocket. Uh, yeah, so this is some kind of a random uh, uh, collection of new things that happen in Rocket. So uh, we implemented the sharing IPC namespace because, uh, as I said before, Linux, uh, sorry, Rocket uses Enspawn and Enspawn doesn't have a concept of only share this namespace, only share that namespace. It does all the namespaces, well, except the net namespace if you opt out. Uh, so uh, what we did basically was add some hidden M variables to system the Enspawn so we can uh, actually uh, share namespaces independently from each other. Um, so yeah, and then we implemented the rocket part. And this was done for some high performance uh, um, performance, performance computed, computer, computing <laughs> a client that needed the IPC namespace to be shared between containers. Uh, yeah, we did a lot of fixes in, the, in, in Rocket to make Rocket Lab possible. Uh, a lot of bug fixes on the Rocket experiment I, I mentioned before. And we added integration between this attached experiment, the IoT one YMAX component, and Kubernetes. Uh, and also we switched to the default KVM flavor from LKVM to VMU, and that was because LKVM was kind of unreliable and it had some problems with mounts. So QMO is, is much, much better in that regard. Uh, yeah, and a uh, recent development that happened was documentation. So documentation is important. And uh, thanks to the CNCF uh, that uh, funded us to actually write a bunch of documentation. And you can see there that uh, we closed 31 issues after November of last year. So that was quite a lot of work. And yeah, we think the documentation state of Rocket is pretty nice now. And we have also some documentation to Rocket Lit, which has, was lucky. Mm. Um, OK. So what comes next for Rocket? Uh, we need to update the CNI uh, version, because Rocket is using version 03. And some features were added later that people are interested in. So uh, this is something we need to do, but it's kind of hard because uh, yeah, there's a lot of assumptions in Rocket that depend on the previous behavior of CNI. Um, we should stabilize the Rocket experiments uh, because yeah, it's not nice having to add an M variable there to do this sandbox kind of thing. So we should just remove them and make sure they work fine. Um, there was some experimentation of using RunC to set up stage two. Uh, and this is so because uh, what we've been doing now to start applications in a pod is run them in a, in a system unit file, which has a lot of primitives uh, like seccom. Uh, you can enable non new privileges. You can enable all kinds of stuff. So usually they translate well with the CRI uh, specification. But sometimes some things are slightly different. So that's kind of hard. So the idea is to use run C, which is, what, uh, which is defined by the OCI. So using RunC, we will have basically the same uh, options as other runtimes. Um, 
One cool thing that my colleague Alban uh, was experimenting with is using CSync. Uh, I'm not sure everybody's familiar with CSync, but it's basically rsync plus content addressable. And it, it makes you, uh, it's a very efficient way to transmit uh, images. Um, and there's a talk later today by my colleague Alban at 3 p.m., I think it is. And if you want to know more about that, please attend that talk. Um, so there's, um, yeah, right now Rocket has OCI image support, but it's not ideal because it's basically uh, integrated in the Docker uh, support of Rocket. So what we do basically is we take the OCI image from the Docker registry and then we convert it to ACI uh, and then we run it in Rocket. But, <coughs> thanks. but uh, there's a possibility of doing it this natively so you don't have to do this conversion step. And of course, general bug fixing because there's always bugs. <laughs> um, so you're talking about the CSync tests. Uh, there's some graphs there. So the, the, the red thing is the uh, amount of data transmitted using CSync, and the blue thing is the amount of data transmitted without using CSync. Uh, but as I said, there's going to be a talk on this, so you will get more details there. Um, so what comes next for Rocketlib? Uh, so we, we don't fully support the CRI. Uh, there's some things missing, and uh, the most uh, yeah, rep, you know, important things are QCTL attached and port forward. That mm -hmm. doesn't work at the moment. Although uh, IFTTY Max allows us to do that, but we have to write the code for, for Rocket. Uh, yeah, the CRI container stats is a new uh, new interface where the, the kubelet can ask for stats to container <laughs> runtimes instead of doing C advisor and checking the C groups uh, manually, which is kind of ugly. Uh, so yeah, that's not implemented there. And we should improve performance because we've just been focusing on uh, making it run and we haven't really looked at the performance yet. Uh, so we run the end-to-end -end conformance tests in Kubernetes and we don't pass them all. Uh, so currently we, had, we passed 130 and we failed 15. Some, some failures are kind of easy to fix some failures are not so easy, uh, but yeah. As I said, uh, I work at Kipfolk and we're a consultancy, so we cannot just work on this unless we have a client that uh, requires us to, well, that pays us to, to do this work. So, yeah. And yeah, I had a demo. Oh, the markdown is kind of screwed up here. But the demo is also screwed up, so <laughs> sorry. Uh, the demo was a, a Kubernetes cluster using Rocketlift and running on kubestorm, which is a tool we built to run um, um, clusters that don't run on VMs, so sorry, that run clusters on your local machine that doesn't run, don't run on VMs, but run on containers. But uh, yeah, the connection here is kind of shitty and I have to download things, so that didn't work. Um, yeah, so well, I have one minute and a half for questions. Any questions? Yeah. Hello, uh, my question is can you make the KVM and default runtimes at the same time? I can spin some containers virtualization. Uh, yes, yes, you can. It's just a runtime option, so you can just uh, run in parallel. Any other questions? <laughs> okay. Thank you.